بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد سمع الله قول التي تجادلك في زوجها وتشتكي إلى الله الله يسمع تحاوركما إن الله سميع بصير صدق الله العظيم وصدق الرسول والنبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي رب زدني علما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الحمد لله ثرود توفيق بالله سبحانه وتعالى في were able to perform the 27th Tarawih Salah of this month of Ramadan, 14, 14, 45. And we heard the 28th Juz in the Tarawih Salah. This 28th Juz has nine surats, Madani surats. And they have a connection to one of the surats in 27th Juz, the previous Juz, Surat Al-Hadid. So <clears throat> there's a connection between these surahs. The surahs which are in this 28th juz, we have Surah Al-Mujadala, Surah Al-Hashr, Surah Al-Mumtahina, Surah Al-Saf. We also have Surah Al-Jumu'ah, Surah Al-Munafiqun, Surah Al-Taghabun, Surah Al-Talaq, and Surah Al-Tahrim. So these are the nine Madani surahs we have in this 28th juz. It begins with Surah Al-Mujadala, Surah Al-Mujadala, in the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions about the incident of a sahabiyya by the name of Qawla bint Thalaba. Qawla bint Thalaba came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam complaining about her husband. The husband, he said to her that you are to me like the back of my mother. So in them days, if a person, if the husband was to say this to the wife, it is known as zihar, a divorce would take place. So Khawla bint Thalaba radiallahu anha came complaining to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, that, look, all of my life I've spent it in the service of my husband, doing his khidmat as much as possible, spent all my wealth on him, my youth on him, and also gave birth to so many of his children, and now I've become old, and I've become weak, and I'm unable to have any more children, and my husband has given me this talaq. It's not fair. So then she came complaining to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after a short while that Jibreel alayhi wa sallam came down with the verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now says that the zihar, if a person was to do, if a husband was to say to his wife that you are like the back of my mother, then the divorce will not take place. However, he has to compensate for it by keeping a fast or uh, there's other rulings for this. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, um, he just narrated this to Khawla bint Thalaba. Another point that's mentioned in this uh, surah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about <coughs> whispering. That when there's two of people, they sat together and they are talking together, make sure you talk in such a way that all those people who are in the gathering, they understand what the talk is about and what the discussion is about. This is the adab of the gathering. That there's three of you, there's five of you. All five of you should be part of the conversation. It shouldn't be such that four of you are talking about one in one language and the fifth one doesn't understand what's happening. And this is against the etiquette of the, of the, uh, of the gathering as well. Another point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in this uh, surah is about the adab of gathering yourself. That if there is a gathering taking place and you are told to make up your space, then fasfahu, then make that space. You know, make that space and make it possible. Now, if you do this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also shower down his mercy upon you. <laughs> so these are the few points mentioned in Surah Al-Mujadala. The next one, we have Surah Al-Hashr. In this Surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about <coughs> the incident that took place during Badr al-Badr and after that, Banu Nadir, and few points regarding them. Then in one of the, three of the verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he categorizes the ummah into three. You have the Muhajirun, you have the Ansar, and you have the rest of the Ummah. Muhajirun, I've already gone by 
Ansar have already gone, and the qualities of Muhajirun and the Sifat of Ansar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the verse. And we are part of the third group. The third group is who? Who they make dua for the first two groups. رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمُنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ That this group is such that they make dua for those who, who, who went before them and who came before them for their forgiveness. They don't have one of, they're not one of those who have ill feelings to them. They don't talk ill about them. They don't talk bad, uh, bad about them. The disputes within the Sahaba is just within them. We as an ummah shouldn't make any comments or we shouldn't put our own you know, opinions and own comments in. There was disputes. We, no person after the Sahaba collectively can come to the lowest Sahabi. The lower collectively, all the rest of the ummah, if they were to put together all the pious and the muhadithun and the mufassirun, everyone put together collectively, they cannot even come to the lowest level of the, uh, the level of the lowest Sahabi. So that's why we should be one of those who make dua for those and we ask Allah that Allah do not put any ill feelings for the groups who have come by before them. And the end of the Surah Al Hashr, the three verses, Wallahu Ladi la ilaha illahu, Alam al Ghayu Shada wa Rahman Rahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, has given his sifat and attributes. One narration, Maqal uh, ibn Amir radiallahu anhu, he narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Maqal ibn Yasir radiallahu anhu narrates that whosoever recites, A'udhu billahi s-sameel alim min ash-shaytan rajim A'udhu billahi s-sameel alim min ash-shaytan rajim A'udhu billahi s-sameel alim min ash-shaytan rajim And then the three verses, Wallahu ladhi la ilaha illahu, alim al-ghaybi wa shahada huwa al-rahman al-rahim Till the end of the surah, if he was to recite it in this manner in the morning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will appoint 70,000 angels to make dua for him. And if he was to die by the evening, he will be given the rank of a martyr. And if the same amal was done at the evening time, he recited, A'udhu Billahi Sameel Alim Mina Shaytan Rajim. A'udhu Billahi Sameel Alim Mina Shaytan Rajim. A'udhu Billahi Sameel Alim Mina Shaytan Rajim. Wallahu Ladi La Ilaha Illahu. Alim Al Ghaybi Wa Shahada Hu Al Rahman Al Rahim. Wallahu Ladi La Ilaha Illahu. Al Malik Al Qudus Al Salam Al Mu'min Al Muhaym Al Aziz Al Jabbar Al Mutakabir. Subhanallah Amma Yushikun. Wallahu Al Khaliq Al Bari Al Musawir. Lahu Al Asma Al Husna. Yusabihu Lahu Ma Fi Al Samawat Wal Ard. Then from the night time till the evening, morning time, the 70,000 angels will make dua for him from Rahmat and Maghfirat. And if he was to die in the evening or night time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also give him the rank of a martyr. So this is something that we should also bring in part of our life. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought the Surah Al-Mumtahina where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about some of the women who accepted Islam but just to test them. Mumtahina comes from the word imtihan where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests them wanted to see that if they were true in their um, acceptance, if they were true in their words. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went on to Surah Al-Saf where he has spoken about the roles of Mujahidun, those who stand firm against the enemy, uh, those who are like a solid w uh, building that doesn't move. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about them and mentioned about jihad briefly and he's also spoken about that these people yuridun al yuthbiu nur Allah bi afwahihim wallahu mutimmu nurihi wa law karihal kafirun that the disbelievers their uh, effort and their struggle will be to extinguish the light of Allah it will be wipe away the beam of the Islam but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wallahu mutimmu nurihi that he will complete and he will accomplish and he will Keep this light of this beam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though the disbelievers will not like it. They will hate it, they will not like it, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to uh, complete this nur. So we have to be very, you know, one of those who make ourselves part of this, that they are there to, uh, you know, keep the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the beam alive in any way possible through da'wah, through tabliq, through ta'alim, through tazkiyah, in every way possible, we do that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about the tijarat, about the transaction, that the best one is that a person who has iman, a person who upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his rasul, and he strives in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then in the next surah, we have surah al-Jumu'ah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about <coughs> Banu Israel, and there were those that they were given this uh, tr uh, trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this divine knowledge, but unfortunately, they just placed it on their back, just like a donkey. We have the books in on the, uh, the uh, back of a donkey, just lowering back, but you won't understand the value of the book on his back. Like this Banu Israel, they didn't value this divine knowledge that came to them, and they wasted it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also giving us a, a lesson for us that no, we shouldn't be one of those who are just, you know, like a person uh, who doesn't value this divine knowledge that we have. 
Then Surah Al-Jum'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that when the adhan of Jum'ah is given, فَسْعَوْ إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَرُ الْبَيْءِ Then go towards the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and close your businesses. Meaning, when the adhan of uh, Jum'ah Salah is given, then close your shops. Head towards the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, head towards the Jum'ah Salah. <coughs> And then Mawlana Abdul Rahim Sayyid Mbala, Damat Barakatuhum, in one of his tafsir, he mentioned that a very good point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in the Quran mentioned about earnings. He's also mentioned about going towards the dhikr of Allah. And he's also mentioned about going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the words that are being used, فَمِشُوا فِي مَنَاكِ لِهَا وَكُلُوا مِنْ رِزْقِ is about going to earn. Then فَسْعَوْ إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Going towards the dhikr of Allah. And then to Allah فَفِرُّوا إِلَىٰ اللَّهِ Now what are the differences? In the first one, when you need to go to earn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Fum shu, just walk towards it. Take it easy, go in a calm manner. Then he says, when it comes to dhikr of Allah, rush a bit, go a bit faster. Put your you know, foot down and go a bit faster towards the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, taking care of yourself as well at the same time. And then when it comes to to Allah, fafiru, bago, Allah ki tarab bago, you know, run towards Allah. So he says, unfortunately, what's happened? We've gone to the opposite. When it comes to the world, when it comes to the, you know, to earning the, the world, we're running towards it. And when it comes to Allah, zikr of Allah, we're lacking and we're sat behind at all. So we should be I mean, having these points in our minds as well. And then after Surah Al-Jum'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about uh, Surah Al-Munafiqun, the hypocrites. Now, there are two types of hypocrites. Those hypocrites which are in the aqidah, aqidah aspect, and those hypocrites are in their actions, in their actions. I forgot the name of the um, our buzur, one of our buzur, he says that most of the percentage of the ummah are falling in the second aspect. Meaning they don't have nifaq in the aqidah. They don't have hypocrisy in their beliefs, but in their action. What they show in front of people is different to what they have in their privacy life, in their private life. They, you know, their private life, they're completely different. And what they show in front of people, they are completely different. This also falls into this category of, um, you know, uh, hypocrisy as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us one of those who is true in both aspects in the, our private life and also in the public life as well. At the end of this Surah Al-Munafiqun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that do not become neglectful because of what? لَا تُحِكُمْ أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Sometimes the wealth and sometimes the children become a means of neglecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Becomes a barrier between us and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says do not make it one of those things. This time to accomplish and carry out the command of Allah, your wealth shouldn't come in between, your children shouldn't come in between as well. <coughs> And in the next surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even says that your wealth and your children are, you know, a, a, a test for you. It means a test for you as well. And it happens sometimes, many times it happens. You know, a person who just got a bit of, you know, no, in, normal income, mashallah, you see he's in the masjid, he's frequently in the masjid, he's taking, spend, spend, spending time in the masjid. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a bit of barakat in his business and you see that, you know, he's got more wealth coming in, then he starts to, he starts to move away from the masjid. He, he feels that he's less... Uh, 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 in the masjid he starts moving away from salah so it becomes a means of test for him and sometimes even the children even the children becomes a test for the person as well for example you know the children will have demands that can you have this can you have this the parents will say no the children will be you know adamant that no we want this tv in the house and we want this and we want to go to this so it becomes a test for us so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that you know you know you couldn't you shouldn't become neglectful for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, always remember the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then there's you've got Surah Al-Taghabun where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he spoke, he speaks about the Day of Judgment. In the big, uh, in the, uh, on the Day of Judgment, in the beginning of the Surah as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the two categories of people. There are believers and there are those who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though this is a Madani Surah, but it has a bit of the, you know, the characteristics of a Makkah Surah as well, where the, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is spoken about Jannat, Jahannam, Akhirat, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about uh, that on the Day of Judgment, there are people in this world who don't believe in the Day of Judgment. They don't believe in Day of Judgment. But what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then say? That when they see it, they'll believe in it. But that'll be too late. So believe it or don't believe in it in this world, Qiyamah is going to happen. You know, you don't believe or you do believe, you'll see the Day of Judgment and then you will see it with our own eyes. Then you've got Surah Al-Talaq. In here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about Talaq itself, about divorce. There are certain rules about divorce, how to give the divorce, how to spend the iddat, the importance of iddat in young age and old age, and how to spend the iddat in young age and old age. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also speaking about the correct method of giving talaq. You can't just shoot three bullets and say it's only one. You know, 
is uh, something that which is unfortunately you know in uh, around people m you know misinterpret and you know misuse this that they say that three is one and how can you know, it's impossible if, if a person has said three divorces it's three divorces and if sometimes people say that you know out of anger has said a divorce you know it's like shooting somebody out of happiness and love you're not going to shoot anybody with happiness and love you say i'm going to shoot a bullet through that person because i love that person nobody's going to do that always out of anger something like this will happen so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about talaq in uh, divorce in this surah and one of the points that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has repeated in surah al-talaq is about taqwa it's about taqwa man yattaqillah man yattaqillah wa yattaqillah so many times allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the taqwa why is that showing us that in your uh, marriages make sure you have taqwa in your divorce at the time make sure you have adopt taqwa at that time as well don't just go you know uh, in a different uh, you know anger etc have taqwa in the divorce as well there's a method uh, there's a, a procedure there's a sunnat method that we will you know, mention then they've got the last surah of this uh, of this juz is surah tahrim where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the mother of the believers. And then there's one of the verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that, Ya ayu ladheena amanuku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the believers that save yourself from the fire of Jahannam and also save your family members from the fire of Jahannam as well. It's very important that we try to implement the deen. We try to bring deen in our life and we became, become the practical model for our family members and those around us that they will see that this is how you practice deen. This is how you practice deen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that save yourself from the fire of Jahannam and save your family members from the fire of Jahannam as well. <coughs> I forgot the name of the alim. He mentions that, you know, sometimes we say uh, that, you know, I'm trying to explain to my child to bring deen into his life and he's not listening and I'm trying to encourage him. So he gives an example that, look, if there was a fire and, uh, you know, the baby is crawling to the fire, are you going to say to the baby, oh, baby, you know, oh, child, don't go towards the fire, oh, beta, don't go towards the fire, or are you going to jump and pick the child up? So obviously, you're going to jump and pick the child up so the child doesn't end up in the fire. So if we are very this careful about the fire of this world, what about the fire of Jahannam? What about the fire of Jahannam? Similar example was given, there was a fire in the house in the middle of the night, what would you do? Are you just going to come out of the house and shout from outside, oh, child, come home, come on, waiter, come outside the house? Of course, you're going to go inside, put yourself at risk, and bring your child outside the house, because if you don't, you know that what the consequence will be. Like this, the Fajr time, Salah, Fajr Salah is there. You can't just say, turn on, the, I just went into the room and called out to my daughter or my two son. No, it's Fajr time, wake up, wake up, and then I went and I left it for them. No, you have to use other ways possible to make sure that they've woken up for the for, for the Fajr Salah and they've prayed the Fajr Salah. So this is one of the points that we learned from this hadith as well. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the two examples of uh, the, that wife who's a, a believer uh, and also the one who's a disbeliever. These are the few points from this, uh, the juz number 28. Now in this surah, in this juz, we had a few uh, um, surahs that were begun with yusabbihu, sabbaha lillahi ma fis samawati. These are the known as musabbihat. They are known as musabbihat. There are around five musabbihat in the uh, here we've got Surah Al-Hadith, Surah Al-Hash, Surah Al-Saf, Surah Al-Jum'ah and Surah Al-Taghabun very close to each other and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam along with his other ma'amulat that he had in the night time he would also recite these, he would also recite these and in uh, Abu Dawood there's a hadith where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned that he would recite this, these uh, five surahs in the evening time and he said say, that there is one verse in there which is virtuous more than thousand verses one of the verses is more virtuous than thousands of uh, thousands of verses uh, verses as well we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to also give us the ability to bring the ma'amulat of our rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam morning and evening the adhkar that we have alhamdulillah we have many kitab available for the adhkar of the morning adhkar of the evening as well we should also uh, we should also um, you know try to practice practice these in our lives as well <coughs> inshallah by doing this we will see the barakat in our own lives as well we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to attach ourselves to the quran give us the ability to implement the you know the um, the teachings and the commandments of the quran sharif as well tonight as we mentioned earlier on could be the laylatul qadr spend as much as time in ibadat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if a person has not read his salat or tasbih yet he's not had the opportunity and tonight could be an opportunity where we spend time in uh, reading salat or tasbih um, there's a cause at the back, I don't know where they've gone, the method of Salatul Tasbih. If a person doesn't know, you can ask that how the Salatul Tasbih should be performed. But the Abbas Rizwan was emphasized, the uncle of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he told him that, look, if you are not able to pray it 
on a weekly or daily basis, at least have it once in your lifetime with a person who prays it in the correct manner, with a correct focus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay, possible that could wipe away all of his sins. So therefore, night of Qadr is possible. So spend the night in ibadat. And there are many, you know, other ma'mulat that you can also have. For example, if a person recites Surah Al-Ikhlas uh, three times, he can get the reward of the entire Quran as well. <coughs> like this, if a person was to recite Surah Al-Kafirun four times, if a person was to recite Surah Al-Kafirun four times, he could also get the reward of praying the entire Quran once as well. We also have about Surah Yasin that if a person recites, he could get the reward of um, the entire Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the person. And also, <coughs> if uh, a person you know takes time out in reading istighfar, and there's another amal that we can also do is recite Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. If a person was to recite 100 times, inshallah, then on the day of judgment, nobody will have more good deeds than this person or the person who's read similar to him. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. There's around 16 a'mal gathered by uh, one of the imam in Bradford, Mufti Sirah Salih Sahib. He's gathered about 16 a'mal a person can do in this night as well. So these are the few. And there's another one more. Rabitu billahi rabba wa bil islam deena wa bil muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam nabiyya wa rasulah. Three times inshallah we'll recite. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make jannah compulsory for us as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to bring those points into our lives. So let's make a short dua inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Subhanallah alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa allahu akbar. ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك له الملك وله الحمد الذي يبي القير يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت وهو على كل شيء قدير سبحان الله وبحمده الذي خلقه ورضى نفسه وزنة عرشه وذال كلماته سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى ال إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى ال إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نصلك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نصلك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نصلك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم أجنا من النار اللهم أجنا من النار يا حي يا قيوم يا حي يا قيوم يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزين في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين والله make iman beloved to us as Allah make good amal and good deeds beloved to us and also beautify it in our hearts and make guna and sin and معصيت and disobedience dislike to us so that we can refrain from sins اللهم اجعلنا هادين ومهتدين غير ضالين ولا مضلين اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا وجعلنا سبلا لمن اهتدى والله guide us towards the right path the path upon those whom we have favored from the uh, from the النبيون from the شهداء from the صالحون الصديقون الله make us the means of guidance and make us means of guidance for the entire أمة <coughs> اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار والله we ask of you from you from yourself your happiness and your pleasure and we ask for refuge and seek refuge from your anger and from your wrath and from جهنم اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل والله we ask you to enter in the jannah and all those actions that will lead towards jannah we ask you that Allah give us the ability to carry those out and Allah we ask for protection from the fire of جهنم and all those actions that we lead towards Jahannam, we ask for protection from that as well. اللهم 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 اجعلنا من التقاء النار اللهم اجعلنا من التقاء النار اللهم عتق رقابنا ورقاب أبائنا ورقاب أمهاتنا ورقاب أزواجنا ورقاب أولادنا من النار والله protect us from the fire of جهنم والله protect us from the fire of جهنم the first ten days of our mercy Allah we had mercy upon us the second ten days of forgiveness we ask Allah that Allah forgive us and the remaining ten days of some from salvation the fire of جهنم we ask Allah that Allah give us salvation and freedom from the fire of 
Jahannam. Allah, every day at the time of Ispar, you forgive a large amount of people. Allah, make us one of those that we have also forgiven. Allah, protect us from one of those who are being cursed upon as we heard in the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he says, I mean, to those people who get the month of Ramadan are not forgiven. Allah, we ask us uh, to be protected, protect, be protected from falling this into category. Allah, grant us Laylatul Qadr, grant us the virtue of Laylatul Qadr and this year and also any <coughs> more years to come in our life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh Allah grant us the barakat and the blessings of the month of Ramadan also make us uh, value the month, uh, the, the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan, we value the, the Laylatul Qadr as well. Allah have mercy upon, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. All those Muslim men, <coughs> men, women, young, old, children, wherever they are suffering, Allah have mercy upon them, Allah have mercy upon them through the barakah of the month of Ramadan, through the barakah of the tilawat of the Quran, through the barakah of these gatherings that we have, Allah have mercy upon them. Allah open the doors of your mercy. Allah open the doors of your mercy. Allah all the suffering they are going through, Allah remove the difficulty. Allah remove the difficulty and grant ease for them. Allah grant ease for them. Allah all those who are suffering in Palestine, our Muslim young children, our elderly, our mothers, sisters, brothers, all those who are suffering only for the sake of, of the protection of Masjid al-Aqsa, Allah grant them, uh, grant them great amount of rewards that they deserve. Those who have passed away, Allah, those who have been martyred, Allah grant them the ranks of martyrdom. And all those who are alive in this world and they are injured, Allah make it the means um, available for their treatment and for their cure. And those who are uh, you know, going through the difficulty of staying in tents and food and famine, Allah make uh, shower your mercy upon them, make av uh, food available for them, safety available for them, make shelters available for them. <coughs> And Allah protect Masjid al-Aqsa, Allah protect Masjid al-Aqsa and protect those who are protecting the Masjid al-Aqsa. Allah make us one of those who are protecting Masjid al-Aqsa in all ways possible and make us one of those who are also protecting the sanctity of Haram Mami Sharifain, Masjid al-Haram and Masjid al-Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. Allah protect Masjid al-Aqsa as well and protect Masjid al-Haram, Masjid al-Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah, whatever good we need to ask, Allah, we ask from that, and whatever evil we need to seek protection from, we ask protection from that. Allah, may I ask you from the best of what you asked me from your Lord Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I ask you from the best of what you asked me from your Lord Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I ask you from the best of what you asked me from your Lord Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I ask you from the best of what you asked me from your Lord Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I ask you from the best of what you asked me from your Lord Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I ask you from the best of what you asked me from your Lord Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I ask you from the best of what and during the other times, Allah, all the shortcomings, forgive our shortcomings. And oh Allah, the Huffaz who have been doing Tarawih Salah, Allah, grant them the great reward that they deserve. All the mehnat and the effort they've been going through and all that struggle and all that tension that they've been going through, that every tension and every moment of their life and all that struggle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, grant them great reward in this world and make uh, great rewards in the hereafter and make it a means of sadaqah jari for them and make it a means of them strengthening their iman and strengthening their ta'aluq with the Quran and strengthening their ta'aluq with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma ameen wa mutazallahu ala muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma wa ahlu wa bana taqabbal minna inna kanta s-sami al-alim wa arina manasikana wa tuba alayna inna kanta tawab al-rahim subhana rabbika rabbil izzati ma yusifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi rahmatika ya rahmat rahimin ameen ya rahmat